everyone for coming. We appreciate y'all being here. Um, my name is James Donnelly. I'm the new Chief of Housing with Cascadia. And I'd love to take credit for all this, but I've only been on the job for four months. So um, I can't take all the credit. But if you look around, you will see everyone who had a role in this. And we're so super excited to have everybody here. Um, before I introduce the speakers, I just want to go through a couple of housekeeping uh, items. Uh, we already invited you for some snacks and beverages. Thanks to Elephant's Deli for providing that. Um, there is one ADA accessible restroom. It's in the uh, corridor here. And then the other restrooms are in the sort of in the trailer back there. Uh, they're an upgrade from, you know, yeah, anyway, they're, they're nice. Uh, <laughs> um, and we uh, will be having some speakers uh, to start with, and then we're gonna have a little ceremonial ribbon cutting, so we invite you guys to all sort of hang around for that. That'd be great. Um, to all of the neighbors, to all of our guests, uh, we welcome you to the space, and we'd like to invite you to explore the common areas and we also are lucky enough to have one unit uh, open. So um, most of the common space is obviously here in the courtyard and then along the corridor here. So feel free to sort of poke around and have a look. There's also a QR code if you'd like to watch the video that is also being presented inside the uh, community room. So if you want to scan the QR code, you can watch it on your phone. And then uh, last but not least, uh, Scott Edwards Architect put together the sustainability uh, presentation board here, which will tell you all about some of the measures that were put into the building to help it uh, you know, reduce its energy load, groundwater, what else? Stormwater, all the it's things, all, there. all the things. Uh, if you believe it or not, I'm actually an architect myself. Uh, <laughs> don't tell the state. Um, and then finally, like I said, uh, if you exit out through the south of the courtyard and there's an entry into the common corridor, that's where you'd be able to access unit 115. It's the bottom floor corner unit right over here. So if you want to go see what a typical unit looks like, some of the beautiful materials that were selected, uh, that'd be your opportunity. So uh, the one uh, favor we'd like to ask is uh, please just remember that it is an occupied building. There are residents here. Please just respect their privacy and, and don't go wandering too far into other places. We're going to limit our exploration to the ground floor. So, all right. Uh, with that, I'd like to invite to the stage uh, President and CEO of Cascadia Health, Daryl Walker. And for those of you who don't know, thank you, thank you. For those of you who don't know Daryl, uh, he has led Cascadia since 2008. He's a psychologist by trade. And he has been a leader in, in the community uh, of community behavioral health for long time. a couple of decades. <laughs> not, too, not that long. Uh, we're th we are, everyone, I, as, a, as the new person, I can say it's easy to see his vision and appreciate it. And we appreciate his leadership. Uh, we appreciate his taking all so much space in the community and just everything that you do. So uh, if I can now, Daryl Walker, CEO. Hi there. Thank you very much. Um, I'll try not to go on and on about this. There's a lot to be said, uh, particularly with this uh, development that will with a lot of the things that Cascadia is doing. Uh, it's really inspiring to see everyone here today. It's a true testament to the fact that uh, we're all about community. We're all about community. And to see this community here together with us today. For the past 40 years, actually, Cascadia Health has been leading uh, community health and housing. Uh, we have a long history. We have many, many uh, housing uh, apartment complexes and so forth, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, that's been from the very beginning when the quadrant system in Multnomah County was started. There were four quadrants, uh, and they've all come together over the years and created Cascadia. Uh, with the opening of this beautiful 71-unit uh, apartment complex, Cascadia now offers over 811 uh, housing units, 811 apartments. It's a lot of apartments uh, for uh, very deserving people. Um, the, uh, that includes uh, 10 of the many apartments we have or facilities we have 
10 including supported housing apartment complexes, 20 apartment complexes for independent living, and 22 licensed residential facilities. So needless to say, we have a lot of facilities uh, and it's uh, over, the, over the 40 years. Uh, and it's, we're very proud of that. It's very unusual to see uh, a health care provider, comprehensive community mental health, integrated care provider with that number of uh, facilities for people to live. Our specialization over all those years has been to provide safe, affordable housing, particularly for people with mental health challenges, um, but not exclusively. I want to recognize that it takes many people to build something like this. I could, you would never believe it. It has been a long process with a strong development team here, um, generous funders, committed uh, local leaders. This is now more than a building. It's a community of residents, neighbors, health, and wellness staff. I want to give special thanks to, uh, I was just talking to them, it feels like family now at this point in time, and that's uh, Colas Construction, uh, Edwards, Scott Edwards Architecture, and the Housing Development Center. All three of those uh, entities have been with us through many years of developing housing, uh, remodeling clinics, and so forth and so on. Colas Construction has amazingly seen us through some really uh, challenging times. This was all done during the pandemic. Uh, the uh, supply chain problems and so forth. And Polis uh, has always been there and made it happen, even through some very flushable periods where we weren't all sure that we could uh, uh, accomplish this in any kind of reasonable time. But thanks to a lot of the Colas, the, the uh, Scott Edwards folks, uh, the architects, and the Housing Development Center, which uh, has seen us through a lot of tough times. As we, as we, Cascadia, have learned how to better uh, develop these kind of program, uh, facilities. Furthermore, I'd like to also thank the funders, uh, Chase Bank, Enterprise Housing Credit Investment, Energy Trust, uh, Equal Housing Opportunity, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Multnomah County, and Oregon Health Authority, the Oregon Housing and Community Services. So there's, needless to say, a lot of organizations, a lot of people involved in a lot of meetings. And naturally, a project like this starts long before groundbreaking. It starts with discussions and budget negotiations in the halls of the Capitol, through the city, county advisory boards, and through countless community partnerships. I want to recognize a few individuals joining us today who play these important roles in our local government. Uh, State Representative Ho Wan Walling, well, I, <laughs> I, I talked with your name, but I... Take anyway. a few tries. No yeah, yeah. Um, the County uh, Commissioner, Laurie Stegman. Thank you, Laurie, for joining us. And Centennial Board Superintendent. We've not met yet, but we've certainly worked a lot with you. It's a, one of our projects that we're the most excited about. We've never, uh, but we will in the future, join partnerships with school districts because uh, school districts are kind of where it's happening and I think we all know that with families in need and so forth. So we're delighted uh, that, and very proud of our partnership with, uh, with the Centennial School uh, District. I think it's really cool. Uh, we have a chance to hear, we'll have a chance to hear from State, uh, uh, Commissioner Stegman and Superintendent Owens momentarily. We have a great deal of pride in this partnership and vision of uh, Centennial Place with 71 units of affordable housing. Centennial Place offers rental assistance for individuals and families managing a mental illness as well as provides homes for families and their children enrolled in Centennial School District who need special assistance in order to afford a place to live as nice as Centennial Place. Through tax credits, rent subsidies, residents can call Centennial Home regardless of income. And through Cascadia's integrated model of care, residents have access to mental health and addiction treatment, primary care, wellness services, and supported employment, and more. All those services are provided by uh, Cascadia Health. Centennial Place is the culmination of years of foresight and planning. And, um, there are a number of, uh, you know, we were talking about who is critical in uh, 
in the early phase and all the way through it of developing this. And one is Jen Halawa that's sitting in the second floor, uh, one of the unsung heroes, Jen. <laughs> Stories Jen and I could tell about uh, finding this place and the, the amount of time we spent trying to figure out strategically wh where would be a good location for this. It was very mindful to make sure that it was in mid to east county, areas that were uh, underserved and that needed a, a good, uh, safe, nice housing, uh, places to live for families and individuals. Um, so uh, I'd now like to introduce and welcome the stage Centennial School Board Superintendent Jay Estelle. Hi, Jay. All right, thank you, Daryl. I'm honored to be here today, as Daryl introduced. My name is James Owens. I serve as the superintendent for the Centennial School District. You picked a great name for this, because we share a name in Centennial. <laughs> Some of you might be wondering why a school superintendent is speaking at an event centered around housing. The answer is pretty simple. Housing is health, and kids who are healthy learn better. The safety, stability, and community we feel when we have somewhere to wake up in the morning, to do our homework in the afternoon, to play with friends, connect with family, and go to sleep at night is a significant factor in whether we engage and thrive in school. By a recent count, over 200 students and their families in this neighborhood have experienced homelessness. For many of them, a significant factor was simply the lack of affordable housing. That's why this partnership between Cascadia Health and the Centennial School District is so important in helping meet the needs of families who have struggled with housing instability. Centennial Place provides deeply affordable, family-sized apartments. We had the opportunity to go see the Model 1 earlier. It was great. A majority of which are reserved for families for youth who are currently enrolled in the Centennial School District. As I mentioned, housing is health. With this increase in affordable housing benefiting Centennial families, students can focus on their education with less physical and emotional health care needs brought on by the stress of a continually changing living situation. In Centennial, equity is the foundation of what we do. This means actively seeking out barriers that make it more difficult for students to engage in their learning and finding ways to help eliminate those barriers. To that end, the ability for our families to get good case management and support where they live is important. Our district's 750 teachers, staff, and administrators serve about 5,800 students at 11 schools. Our district is unique in many ways. Ultimately, what I believe distinguishes us is our ongoing dedication to providing our students and community with the exceptional opportunities they deserve, and that includes engaging in partnerships like these. Centennial is proud to have a long-term partnership with Cascadia Health, providing health services to Centennial students and families. We're grateful to be able to deepen this partnership with the development of Centennial Place. To that end, I would like to recognize the Centennial School District Homeless Liaison, Lori Palmeiter. She has worked with Cascadia Health to help make this idea a reality by attending planning meetings, collaborating on the development of the district level referral process, scheduling appointments, and coordinating the needed accessibility supports. So let's give Lori a round of applause. I hope the addition of housing and services that Centennial Place brings to our neighborhood is just the beginning. The need for meaningful development and partnerships across industries like housing, healthcare, and education brings valuable support to the East Portland community. I want to thank Cascadia Health for their partnership, and I welcome home all the residents of Centennial Place. Thank you. Really appreciate that sentiment, uh, Superintendent. That's uh, really great, really good. Yeah. 
I'm the one reminding people, right? <laughs> um, because that really is what it is, right? It's partnership, it's community, it's it's us all, you know, working together to to to, to build something better collectively. So um, at this time, I'd like to welcome to the stage uh, Multnomah County Commissioner Lori Stegman. Commissioner Stegman represents East County District Four on the board of uh, Multnomah County Commissioners. First elected in 2016, Commissioner Stegman has been a consistent champion for underserved communities, specifically addressing housing stability, economic development, and public safety. Welcome, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know about you, but it's been a long day for me. Uh, you may have heard that we just passed this morning a three and a half billion dollar budget at Multnomah County. Um, and uh, yeah, it deserves a round of applause. Uh, the general public has no idea how much work and effort goes behind a, a budget like that. I, I would imagine many of you do realize that. But you know, when I'm at a project like this, like this is how projects like this get funded, is through our budgeting process. So it's really an appropriate day for me to be here to see just the good work of all of our incredible partners and nonprofits and service providers and COLAS, who seems like you're everywhere all the time <laughs> doing great things, which I love. Uh, and, and wow, can you do something? Uh, I mean, I never knew they could do so much with a bowling alley, right? <laughs> like you all know, like, I mean, I, I lived in this neighborhood my whole life. I, don't, I live in Gresham now. I actually used to live in that mobile home park right across the street too, as an adult. So this is my neighborhood. This is your neighborhood. And this is home to lots of really great friends and well-deserving people that, that, as has been said, that housing, it is life. Housing is what we all need to thrive and be successful. So I'm just like, <sighs> it's so great just to be here. And this is why we all work so hard, is to provide housing for those who need and deserve it. So uh, I'm really happy to be here. I'm a longtime East County resident. Uh, I went to Lynch Terrace Elementary School. I have older brothers and, and a sister who went to Centennial uh, that provided a great education and foundation for us. Um, so I just grew up down the street. I still have a business in the Rockwood neighborhood that I've owned for over 30 years. And I know, as well as you know, uh, that we have challenges here in East Multnomah County. We have high poverty rates, we have low income rates, but I also know we have huge potential and huge heart and great diversity. So uh, as has been mentioned, one of the things, several of the things I care about are housing stability and economic development. Those have been really important priorities for me. So it just brings me a lot of happiness and joy to be here. So we know that East County is a vibrant and wonderful place to live uh, and that it's geographically diverse and brimming with potential. And we also know that most of our neighbors here are cost burden and find it extremely difficult when trying to secure and maintain housing. And all too often, imagine spending 30 to 50% of your paycheck each month just for your housing. Focus investments and resources to support residents and build a thriving infrastructure in East Multnomah County requires thoughtful conversations around community support and funding. And clearly you all have been having those conversations literally for years, right? But what really makes the difference as we increase afford affordable housing units is permanent supportive housing. You all get it. And that's what Centennial Place is going to provide. By providing case management, mental health care, addiction and recovery treatment, employment services, rent assistance, and other care as needed is what helps people get into housing and stay in housing. The partnerships between Cascadia Health and the community show how conversations and community support can propel such projects towards successful and sustainable outcomes. I look forward to continuing these important partnerships and invite more collaboration and partners as we address ongoing housing instability in East County. Centennial Place is a home that we can all be proud of. Its beautiful design was centered on providing families a place where they're not just being housed, 
but a place where they can grow and thrive and be part of a vibrant community here in the Centennial neighborhood. I hope that each one of you who call Centennial Place your home feel a sense of belonging, permanence, and kinship. Welcome home. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner. We really appreciate those uh, those words. Uh, frankly, for the next three uh, speakers, I, I wouldn't want to have to follow that, right? <laughs> uh, that's a tuck, tough act to follow. But at this time, I would like to invite, uh, before we get to the ceremony ribbon cutting, I'd like to invite up three very important members of the team, and that would be uh, Philip Porter, the Senior Vice President and Head of Acquisitions and Housing Credit Investments for Enterprise Community Partners, uh, Lisa McClellan, principal with Scott Edwards Architect, and uh, she led the design team who helped design this beautiful uh, structure uh, and place, frankly. And, and uh, finally, Michael Hurley, uh, the managing director and market executive for Chase. Would you please come up? Thank you, Chase. Um, so again, my name is Philip Porter. I'm with Enterprise, and uh, Enterprise is an intermediary, and that's a fancy word for we do a lot of things to support community development uh, sponsors in this uh, work of affordable housing. And uh, Enterprise has been around for just about 40 years, We're celebrating a big anniversary uh, very soon, and also surpassing the 20 billion dollar mark for equity invested. So it's um, you know it's. I've enjoyed my 21 years at Enterprise, and I look forward to many more. So Enterprise, we really um, help the people who help people, okay? And our role in this development was to match the investor, JP Morgan, with you know the sponsorship, working with Jim Halaba and the folks at HTC to arrange for the equity investment. So it's um, really a privilege to participate in this development. We've got a, a large office here in Portland with a whole bunch of folks from uh, you know, all of our different departments here. And so it's always uh, something we're grateful for to be able to work locally and uh, support a sponsor like um, Cascadia, who's we've worked with four times now. And they do wonderful work and uh, we know they're helping the people. So thank you and I'll hand it off now to Lisa. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, as was mentioned, I'm Lisa McClellan. I'm a principal with Scott Edwards Architecture. Um, and our ethos at Scott Edwards Architecture is people first, design forward. And what that means to us is if you put people in the heart of your process, good design naturally follows. Um, I lead our uh, studio in our firm that focuses on our community-based work, including affordable housing. And I um, was really honored to be asked to speak at this event. Uh, Centennial Place is the second affordable housing project that we have worked on with Cascadia Health. Um, and we really appreciate their approach to providing whole health care um, because that recognizes that access to affordable housing is health care. Um, and one way I think this focus on whole health care manifests itself in a building um, project is through a commitment to sustainability. Centennial Place will receive Earth Advantage Platinum certification. Um, that is the highest level certification possible through Earth Advantage. And what this means is that Cascadia Health has prioritized the health of its residents, it's prioritized the health of the community, and dare I say, the health of the planet. And um, that's something really to be honored and celebrated with this building. Um, and as James had mentioned, um, there is a board over here uh, that we created, rather than me going on and on about all the many, many features of this building, sustainable features of this building, I um, invite you to go look at the board after the ribbon cutting, and if you do have any questions afterwards, certainly come talk to me about it, and I'm gonna be introducing some members of our team later, and you could reach out to them as well if you want to know more. But um, just applaud uh, Cascadia Health's commitment to sustainability. Mentioned the design for the education study rooms. 
Sure, sure. No, I wasn't actually. Um, because so Daryl had just asked me to make sure I touch on some features of the building that you aren't going to get to see, and especially given the partnership with the Centennial School District. Um, uh, you'll be able to see the community room, some of the uh, common spaces that are very light filled that that connect both sides, uh, wings of this building. But what unfortunately you won't be able to see today, but is an important feature of the building, is this: these two windows right here with the, um, the open vent there are um, homework rooms. Mm -hmm. And that is something unique that we didn't do in our first project. And that is a direct result of the partnership with the Centennial School District. And so there's these two flex rooms on each floor. They're immediately adjacent to these common lounge spaces and they're adjacent to the laundry room. And that laundry room also has a view of the courtyard and the children's play area. And so this node up here uh, is very central to building community in this building. Um, <laughs> the, um, I think James had, had alluded to the fact that the, the design and construction of affordable housing is, is not an easy project. This is not something for this, uh, this is not something for sissies to do. This is something that for really committed, dedicated people. Um, our work with Cascadia on this specific project started back in 2017. Um, so quite a while ago. Um, I think this illustrates just how, how long it takes to get an affordable housing project constructed in, uh, these days. And that was when we first started working with them to, to envision what is possible on this site and so that they could submit their first of many, many applications for funding. Um, we were not the only member of the building team on board at that early stage. A housing Development Center, of course, an extremely key uh, partner, and then also, as mentioned, Cola's Construction. Um, maybe people weren't familiar with the process of getting a uh, project like this built. Imagine that the general contractor might only come on board when, when it's time to put the shovels in the ground, um, and that's not the case. Uh, Colas Construction is a valued partner at the very beginning, giving um, cost estimating and constructability advice and uh, attending every one of those owner, architect, contractor meetings early on to make sure that we were doing this right from the very beginning. Um, I am also standing up here representing a whole team of architects and designers from Scott Edwards Architecture. Um, I get to be the figurehead. Um, but, um, but with us today in the back here um, are Haley Purdy, A. Henny Fama Higgins, and um, Jared Thornberry. Uh, we also had some other members of the um, design team that cannot be here today, and I want to specifically make note of one of them, one of our project architects, Melissa Ean, who uh, tragically passed away this spring. She really put her heart into this project and uh, really cared for it, was very proud of it. And we um, are here today knowing that this project is a really wonderful lasting legacy to her memory. <laughs> Lastly, I want to finish to say that for um, Almost 30 years now, I have been designing affordable housing. And I can honestly say that this day is always my favorite day of any project. Um, because it is the day where we get to come to the building and really see it being inhabited by the people that we designed it for. Um, it's the day that we can see people enjoying clean, safe, supportive, sustainable, and affordable housing. And so I just want to say welcome home, and it's a real honor to work on a project like this. Thank you. So I'm between ribbon cutting and food. <laughs> no, pressure. no pressure. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Hurley. I'm honored to be here today to represent Chase and celebrate the grand opening of the Centennial Place Apartments. We are incredibly proud to be a part of this project, which is uh, building 71 affordable apartments, uh, bringing 71 affordable apartments to the community, giving residents a place they can call home. As we all know, this ribbon cutting comes at a time when housing continues to be in great need and still be an instrumental part in helping solve this and 
For us to be an instrumental part of solving this crisis while providing services and amenities to all residents is a really awesome thing to see. At Chase, we remain committed to being to help close the housing gap by creating a safe, stable housing, building places where people want to live, work, and thrive. We continue to contribute to various organizations within the Portland area and are thrilled to be a part of this one as well. I'm truly honored to be here as we celebrate this incredible moment. Congratulations to everyone who had a hand in making this uh, development and day possible and best of luck to the new residents at Centennial Place. Thank you. All right. Um, first of all, thanks to all those who came up and would, uh, said such kind words about this project. And as I was standing over there off to the side, and I'm going off script, so Stephanie's probably never gonna let me do this again. But I like, I've only been here for four months, and I look around, I see you, Ro. I see everybody who put in so much to this project, and it's just amazing. And I would like to personally give everyone here a round of applause from me. So thank And with that being said, I think we'll move forward to the ribbon cutting ceremony. So, uh, I think I have a list of people here. If Daryl, uh, Superintendent Owens, Commissioner Stegman, uh, Representative Wa Wynn, yeah. uh, Phil Porter, Lisa McClellan, Michael Hurley, Jim Halava, and a representative from Colas, Andrew's not here. Do you guys draw straws for that? <laughs> if everyone would please join us up here, we've got some comically large scissors to use. Sorry, I'll give one. Oh no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay, one last thank you to everybody again, and uh, we'd like to invite you uh, to uh, help yourself to some food. Thanks again to Elephant Deli, uh, and uh, please feel free to show yourself around the common areas. Thanks again for everyone coming.